Well, opening hotel room doors is one way to use your phone. Of course, you can also use it to take your selfies. Thank you, technology. Well, now Susan Sarandon is claiming on Twitter that she and Gina Davis invented the selfie with her iconic photo in the classic film Thelma and Louise. And what a difference a few decades makes. Today, we are posting over 1 million, yes, 1 million selfies a day on social media. So what exactly is the secret to snapping the most flattering selfie? For that, we turn to a professional, photographer Gina Esposito, who takes masterful pics with her camera and her phone too. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me, Rebecca. So you do this both ways. You do it with your, I mean, let's be honest, you're probably using this less than you're using the, your real camera. This is very true, yeah. Um, I actually get that question a lot because obviously we're in a day and age where uh, social media is huge. It's popping up everywhere. And so just kind of some tips and tricks to be able to take the best selfies, really. Um, the most flattering angle is always holding uh, whatever smartphone you're using over your head. Um, it slims uh, out your body. Hold like it up. This? right, Right above your brow, a little bit above the brow line. Above uh, the brow line. Absolutely. It just gives a more slimming effect when you're looking down for sure. What else? Um, next thing is a lot of people forget to do this, but your background is everything. A lot of people focus <laughs> on themselves as a subject, uh, you know, rightfully so. Um, but I see these all the time where people are in their bedrooms and they're feeling good for the day and they're looking at themselves and thinking, you know, I want to take a selfie. Um, but unfortunately, they forget all of the dirty underwear that are in, that's in the background <laughs> of the photos and maybe last night's dinner that's on the nightstand. And we so, don't need to see that. No, nobody wants to see that. That's not sexy. What so. about a facial experience? expressions. Do you have any recommendations? Well, obviously, um, duck face has been huge. Um, it's been right. a phenomenon that has completely sweeped the country. Um, to each his own. I don't really, I'm not a really big advocate of the duck face, uh, but just any expression that you feel like you look the best in to really work that angle. As we are shooting down on ourselves, where should the eye focus be? Um, the eye focus, obviously, if you're shooting down, uh, you should be looking in the lens. You shouldn't necessarily be looking at yourself in the reflection of the phone, which so I many people do. I see that all the do. time, right? Yeah, it's a little awkward, and you want to make sure that you're looking in the lens of a phone like you would be if you were using a real camera. How do you feel about people looking off? Um, it just, uh, it's, it's, it's... It's funny to say, um, I don't think it looks natural. It, it looks like you're trying a little bit too hard. Um, just always look direct in the camera, um, unless you're trying to do one of those cool, smooth photos where you're looking off into the sunset or into the distance. <laughs> That's pretty much the only time that works. You've probably, as a photographer, taken some of those photos of Absolutely. people looking off into the distance, especially yes. on their wedding day. Oh, it's so huge, yeah. And especially, we just briefly talked about the backgrounds uh, of your selfies, and we could kind of tie that right into photography, specifically weddings. Um, just making sure that your subject um, is also a part of your background as well, that they both complement one another. Now that everybody is a professional, and you see this at weddings all the time too, it, it used to be sometimes people might leave out on the table a disposable camera and say, yes. collect a few shots. Now, there's weddings where everybody has their phone out the entire time. As a photographer, is that difficult for your business? You know, um, sometimes it is. Uh, when I'm often shooting a ceremony and I look down the aisle seconds before the bride is supposed to make her big grand debut, it kind of looks like a bit of the TV wall at Best Buy, uh, where everybody's <laughs> holding up their big iPads in the aisle and I kind of have to quickly run down and say, I'm so sorry, but you know, I have that to, I have to so funny. This. Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, it's not even just the iPhones, it's the iPad. And we know that other smartphones that are very large um, and cumbersome, they also kind of stick them into the aisle. Um, but another um, issue I'm finding we're running into as well um, is an era that I like to call over editing. Um, a lot of people think that the more you process a photo and you turn your skin purple and orange, the more artistic and creative it looks. And it's really more so about bringing it back to the basics and really keeping the natural beauty that's already in the photo. So for that selfie, no filter? Um, not necessarily no filter. Just try. The rule of thumb is to always make your skin tone look natural. When you go to a movie and you see a movie, their skin tone is flesh colored. It's not purple. It's not green unless you're the Hulk. Um, but <laughs> other than that, we, it's the most flattering to get as close to flesh tone as you can possibly get. So then what's the best lighting for taking this? Well, the best lighting is always going to be available light. Um, if you are not an experienced photographer and you're not sure how to properly light yourself up or light up your subject, um, available light is always key. It's always the most flattering. Um, a tip that I always like people to try and use is if you you need two cell phones though to do this uh, maybe use a friend and have them turn their flashlight app on on their phone and just shine it on your shine it on your face maybe a little bit further back but enables you to shut the flash off of your phone so you eliminate that entire black background that's behind you when you take your selfie as a photographer who's making it in a difficult business what's your recommendation to people who want to get started in this who think of it as a job and, and, a, and a business they'd like to create well first and foremost I think um, a lot of people mistakenly think a photographer just takes a photograph. Um, we are really a creative director the day of. We are 
really controlling everything, manipulating the situation, calling the shots. Um, and you're sometimes a counselor, you're sometimes a therapist, <laughs> uh, you're, you're an event planner at times, and you're a time manager. So you have to be able to flow with the events of the day and sometimes really redirect them if need be. So there's so much more than just taking a, a photograph. What's the craziest thing that happened behind the scenes at a wedding you've shot at? The craziest thing that happened behind the scenes at a wedding I shot at? Um, it would probably have to be that the bride and groom decided to, uh, we were at a place, um, and the bride and groom decided to jump in the fountain um, at the venue. Uh, obviously, there was probably a little bit of uh, liquid <laughs> courage involved in that as well. Um, they weren't necessarily allowed to, uh, but there's been some pretty crazy things happen uh, for sure. But I think jumping in the fountain and trashing the dress on the day of your wedding is probably the craziest thing. I hope you got the shot as she was on her way in and not just once she was we, in the pool. We get it all. We don't miss anything <laughs> for sure. What is your advice then to people who want to choose a wedding photographer? It's a difficult task. It is incredibly difficult. And what I would say is um, just as well as talent is important and be able to capture a photo is important, it's also important to be able to vibe with your photographer and have a work chemistry because one thing that clients sometimes forget is that you are with your photographer out of all of the vendors the longest. So if you don't like them in the meeting or if you feel like your personalities don't jive so well, that's the person that's going to be with you your entire day. So you need to make sure that you're friends with them. It's a really good point. At my Huge. wedding, my, I loved my photographers at my wedding in Minneapolis uh, and, and they were fantastic and we did spend, now that I think about it, we probably the whole spent day. more time they were like your BF for the day. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even more time than my husband. All right. No, well, right. Exactly. What are the top three questions then that every bride and groom should be asking if they're hiring photographers? Well, I would absolutely first and foremost say that you need to meet your main shooter prior to booking whatever studio you use. Um, again, this kind of just ties in saying you have to know them, you have to love them, you have to want them with you on the day of your wedding. Um, another huge question is that people should ask also is they need to see a full portfolio of an entire wedding because sometimes you can get lucky as a photographer and grab one good shot. That's and maybe, possible. Yeah, it's super possible. Yeah, anything's possible on the day of your wedding and especially. Um, but you have to see entire full portfolio of the entire event before you make any of your decisions as well. Gina Esposito, thank you so much Thanks for joining so much us. For really me. great information. I appreciate it. Everyone enjoy taking your selfies now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>